Uh, hello. Uh, uh, I would like to thank the organizers of the conference for uh, arranging uh, such a long and impressive uh, event. Uh, so I am uh, uh, going on with my uh, presentation. Okay. So uh, I hope everyone can see it. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, um, one of the roles of social scientists and uh, fashion scholars is uh, to observe uh, the world and try to uh, uncover the patterns and regularities which uh, underpin current events and occurrences. And uh, we all see that never have video calls been such an integral part of our life than they have these past months. And uh, as we find uh, ourselves in a world of uh, new normal, uh, we see new dress codes uh, for uh, virtual academic events and uh, online teaching. They're forming very quickly. Uh, and uh, I'm asking, that's uh, my uh, principal question, uh, are they really new? And uh, my short presentation aims to analyze the blend of novelty and tradition in uh, the strategies of professional academic self-presentation uh, online. And when I began this research, my initial emphasis was on defining the new elements in these strategies. But as I was uh, going on with my research, I started to notice more similarities with some already familiar uh, dress codes and uh, their inevitable inner conflicts and uh, stereotypes. Uh, university uh, teachers and researchers are every day facing the question of how to dress for teaching online, what to wear for Zoom seminars and uh, video conferences, but uh, all these questions actually very different from uh, the old uh, dilemmas uh, of dressing for conferences and seminars for teaching offline. What to wear? And uh, the experts from different fields uh, readily supply us with lots of advice on uh, groom for Zoom, uh, strategies of self-presentation about body fragmentation and the visual accents on the upper part of the body, uh, the necessity of uh, avoiding low angles uh, for the face and uh, the importance of correct makeup, uh, the option of um, staying invisible by stopping the video and how to choose uh, the right background, uh, endless advices. Uh, you could compile a whole manual uh, by now. So these technical triggers are good to know. Yet I'm more interested to understand what tacit conventions are at play here, uh, what uh, factors influence fashion choices in this situation. So now let's list uh, the main conventions of academic uh, dress code uh, offline. Uh, I would like just to say specifically that please notice I do not mean uh, formal uh, academic dress uh, used at uh, graduation ceremonies. Um, while you see this uh, um, caricature, this sketch, uh, I mean uh, everyday uh, outfits uh, for work, for conferences, and the field of my observations is mainly uh, the humanities. So uh, first of all, uh, the main semantic opposition here is uh, academia versus business. That's why you see uh, the business uh, suit here uh, crossed out. Uh, and uh, uh, the world of academic research and university teaching uh, assumes uh, smart but uh, informal uh, dress code. Uh, while business requires the formal suits, as we know, both for men and women. And my central assumption is that the opposition of business formal style and uh, academic uh, relaxed uh, looks uh, remains relevant in uh, online teaching. Uh, the second aspect is uh, physical freedom. Uh, the outfit for teaching and writing should not be tight. 
hence uh, oversized clothes are so convenient and currently uh, fashionable uh, right now and uh, one could remember uh, the famous essay by Umberto Eco uh, when he started uh, uh, praising uh, the jeans for the pronounced casualness but uh, also noticed that uh, Denim's firm grasp distracted him from his thoughts imposing a rigid demeanor on him, preventing him from sprawling or slumping, but uh, baggy jeans is the only exclusion as they're comfortable uh, to wear. Uh, the third feature of uh, academic style uh, offline is a predilection for plain colors, preferably dark, so as not to distract the students or conference participants from a lecture or paper, but the important exception is uh, the use of accessories. They could be eye-catching and artistic, creative. The only restriction is that uh, they should not be gold, uh, preferably silver or contemporary conceptual uh, jewelry. And uh, last but not least, uh, suppressing the sexual overtones in an outfit, making it uh, more restrained and uh, uh, undemonstrative. Covering the body, and uh, to use uh, the term of James Lover, shifting erogenous zones is a, a conventional modesty uh, imperative, going back uh, to the old rules of uh, dress for success and uh, the general moral of uh, modesty uh, in culture. There is even uh, a list of things recommended for uh, avoiding like uh, visible uh, bra straps, uh, uh, cleavage, short skirts or shorts, uh, sheer clothing uh, and so on. So uh, balancing uh, the performative aspects of gender professionalism and the inevitable visibility uh, in Zoom, uh, the female academics frequently opt for compromise, uh, like working with layers or preferring universal black color and uh, baggy clothes that do not restrict uh, the body. And uh, summing up uh, these uh, uneasy and sometimes contradictory conventions, they often get a predictable result, ending up with a plain dark uh, outfit concealing the body and in the best case scenario, demonstrating the original design and the skillful use of accessories. Uh, there are many evidences uh, that uh, uh, women researchers and teachers uh, experience uh, dissatisfaction when trying to adapt to academic dress codes. And uh, they're often in this case, uh, uh, get criticism and uh, frequently they are criticized by their male colleagues. And uh, I will quote just one of our typical examples, um, just quotation from a female academic. I was questioned about my fashion choices uh, by the moderator who had seen uh, that uh, I was wearing uh, a borrowed Hermes jacket and the author uh, found herself making excuses uh, by saying, please don't judge me for caring about uh, what I wear in public, for having more than a passing interest in fashion. So uh, the criticism here was obviously directed against uh, dressing up. Uh, that's uh, a typical conservative reproach to women for being too fashionable. And uh, in this case, uh, for appropriating at the conference uh, kind of uh, corporate uh, business style and uh, uh, being too uh, light-minded in this outfit. Uh, so uh, um, these general recommendations, uh, they um, uh, are still, uh, well, they can be traced very easily uh, in the advice given uh, for uh, Zoom clothes. Okay, I'm just trying uh, uh, to finish. Uh, so no, first of all, it's again about covering the body. Uh, like ad an advice like steer towards solid colors and uh, avoid sleeveless tops or anything uh, off the shoulders. 
Otherwise, you run the risk of seeming like you're taking the call in your birth and trace. So here we see the same imperative of modesty. And then what is the best option according to the author of this advice? The best option is wearing a turtleneck because uh, turtlenecks cover the most surface area. And uh, you can dress them up with pearls or scarves and uh, they are good for framing uh, the face. Um, in other words, just anything but cover uh, your body. Uh, and again, a Zoom call is not uh, the time for cleavage, sleeping necklines to showcase bra straps or a neckline so wide or low that the blouse begins uh, below the camera line. That's uh, uh, a typical advice. Uh, so now what uh, are we rest with? Uh, it's uh, the same uh, black uh, color. Uh, here I am showing the picture of uh, the late uh, Louis Wilson, uh, the mm, famous director of the Fashion MA at uh, Central uh, St. Martin. And it's again the black color, uh, which uh, is normally seen as both uh, serious and uh, sophisticated, yes, uh, modest and uh, arrogant uh, at the same time. This style became a uniform for intellectual women, in particular uh, specializing in art and uh, fashion studies. So now I'm jumping to my uh, conclusion. And uh, uh, the conclusion uh, is, mm, so I'm just showing another set of uh, recommended clothes for Zoom. Uh, the conclusion is, I believe that uh, the cultural and uh, fashionable outline of dressing and participating in the academic event by Zoom is basically the same as giving a paper at a standard academic conference. Zoom academic events is a space where individual intellectual accomplishment is of course highly valued. So there is more latitude for personal style than in corporate business, but still less freedom in fashion choices, especially for women. And the newest uh, video technologies create only a superficial effect of innovative format. Dressing for Zoom academic events is still in many aspects influenced by the traditional restrictive conventions of academic dress code for women. Deep inside the new technologies uh, are concealed the old stereotypes and conflicts originating from our cultural memory. So uh, we see that uh, sweeping social, political and economic changes have always impacted how people dress and soon we will know how this reflects on the post-COVID-19 period. Thanks for your attention. Thank you, uh, Olga, for your presentation. Uh, yes, it was <laughs> interesting that when I was uh, actually getting dressed for today's uh, conference, I remembered your uh, talk and I understood that actually uh, during this uh, online Zoom culture, I got back to black in order mm -hmm. to probably, yes, uh, to properly stress my presence uh, on the screen during mm -hmm. lectures and talks. Interesting. Yes. So we yes. have... Yeah, Yes, I wanted to uh, base my presentation on uh, a personal experience and uh, I'm very interested to hear the comments because uh, I think it's also, well, not on the personal, but maybe a collective experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there are some comments uh, in, uh, yes, in, uh, on our chat, in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Yes, on uh, Laney, yes, Laney addressed uh, sleevelessness, uh, which is uh, a norm in uh, Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, and yes, you can see we have comments uh, from Sophie Wood. I mm -hmm. always use the phrase fashion black to refer to fashion academics wearing black. Mm -hmm. uh, and once she made a mistake of wearing a strapless jumpsuit for, the, for a Zoom call and people asked if she was dressed. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right. Yes. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, there are many variants of uh, black. It's just, uh, it was difficult to uh, discuss it in a short presentation. There is, for instance, black of uh, museum curators, of fashion uh, history specialists, uh, 
of art history uh, scholars. Uh, so, of course, one should be more specific and nuanced. <laughs> right, thank you. Questions, uh, comments? Yeah, I see that Ingun is interested, and yeah, uh, I remember yeah. that uh, Ingun always wears something very color yeah. colorful at the fashion conferences, and uh, it's always a pleasure to look yeah. at this colorful. Yeah, she, she's, she's bright, bright array of white uh, in our yes, 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 world yes. of black. Ingun, it's a pleasure to see you, Olga, and also listen to your talk. Uh, really, really, it was. Um, uh, it's very nice to listen to you, and uh, I think you you made some very important points there uh, about uh, when we are facing things that are changing and might have changed more than we realized before that things could change in so short time. Mm -hmm. uh, it is important not to to, to forget that uh, to study is also to study what is not changing and that uh, how we are dressing it's actually a very conservative felt field i mean we are mm -hmm. we are following rules that has been with us for a very long time and uh, it takes uh, uh, it's it's slowly developed here and i think uh, especially in the field of clothing and fashion it is very important to to emphasize everything that is not changing because change has been such a uh, very much promoted way of thinking about clothing. Mm -hmm. So I thank you again. It was very good. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs>